is this? If you were to say, a round blob of metal, you'd be right. If you were to say, this is just a cannonball, you'd be just a little bit right. This, you see, is something that helped make the world a better place. Greetings, I'm Jonathan Cruck, your storyteller, here at the Putnam History Museum with an object telling a tale. Yes, this is a cannonball, but the way it got made made things better all around. See, during the War of 1812, the White House got set on fire by British cannonballs, and Baltimore got bombed. You know how the song goes. The bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there, the Star Spangled Banner. But you see, during the War of 1812, Americans didn't have much in the way of cannonballs. They didn't have a place to make cannonballs or cannons. The place is called foundries. So, when the war ended, President James Madison said, Now what we need are some big, bad cannons. And we gotta make them here in the United States. Well, that inspired a fellow from around here, Cold Spring, New York, named Governor Campbell to petition the President and Congress and say, Look, the Hudson Highlands have iron mines nearby trees to make the charcoal, the Hudson River to ship the cannons and the cannonballs down to New York City and beyond. Plus, West Point is nearby, the United States Military Academy, and a fortress to guard the foundry. So President Madison agreed to have the foundry started not too far from this, the Putnam History Museum. Now, at first, they made things like well, piping and silk machines, and even the very first locomotive train called the Best Friend. But along about 1835, there comes a fellow by the name of Captain Robert Parrott. I know, sounds like he's a pirate, but he treasured something, doing things in a quick and efficient way. And so he began to have everything of metal made right in and around at the West Point Foundry, including cannons and the cannonballs. Why, he even made the Swamp Angel, which helped win the American Civil War. And during the Civil War, over 1,200 workers worked 10-hour shifts, shifts to make, well, over 2,000 cannons and three million cannonballs, because everything got made in one place. And you know, some years later, a fellow got inspired by this. He found the assembly line could help him, well, get people to travel easily. And so he borrowed ideas from the West Point foundry to make automobiles. And that fellow was Henry Ford. We are still using many of the ideas brought about by making cannonballs and cannons all in one place. And that place where it started was just down the road a piece near the Cold Spring train station, the West Point Foundry. And this, my friend, has been an object telling a tale. I'm Jonathan Crook. Thanks for watching.